Hi everyone, I'm Christine and it's been five years since I finished my Integrative Marketing Communications program at Northwestern. Five years after, it's still a mouthful. We just call it the IMC program and if you're watching this video, you might be considering the program or you're firstly graduated and thinking about the career outlooks. The program's always been pretty popular when I was applying, when I was in school, and still quite popular now. A few videos exist about the curriculum and blogs on what the actual life is like as an IMC student, but it kind of stops there. So as someone that's a few years out of the program, hopefully this video is helpful for you if you're considering the program or are going through it right now. So I'm going to talk to you about five years after the program, what are the career outlooks, looking at my personal career and my peers, where everyone's at. I'm also going to talk about kind of the three things that I like and maybe dislike about the program. And also tips, if you haven't started the program and are thinking about it, what are some of those five tips that you could get the most out of the program? So to start, I finished the program about five years ago. Right now I'm at a brand consultancy slash brand agency working with global companies to define their brand strategies. I did a video previously about how I got into brand strategy. I will link that video here. Looking at the other IMC people five years after graduation, I did a small research on what everyone is up to. And I have to say, everyone's everywhere. So we have around 130 people within our class each year. It was a pretty global mix of people and it's a mix of skill sets too within the different possible paths to pursue. In the IMC program, I pursued a brand strategy and content marketing track, and there's also a marketing analytics track. There was strategic communications. Being able to explore all those different options within the program, there's a lot of paths that people can go down. So I'm gonna list out what everyone's doing. We have people in market research and consumer insights, some that decided to go down the entrepreneur route and start their own companies. We have quite a few in different types of strategy, some on content strategists, digital strategists, brand strategists, marketing strategists, media strategy, also growth strategy, pretty much all different types of strategy. People pursue a path in product management or some do product marketing in tech companies. Some are doing brand management and also brand marketing within the brand side. Data science is also a path. We have peers that decided to go into management consulting as well. Some and analytics within a wide range of companies. There's also some that are doing account management or account strategy. Some people are business intelligent engineers. We also have some that are doing general marketing functions, kind of covering all the different types of marketing that I talked about before and some that are in business functions like digital transformation, operations, etc. And those are kind of the rough fields because the program is for people that are transitioning from college grad to also we had people that had 10 years experience. So I would say the level that people are at definitely vary. A lot of us are at senior levels within our companies. Some of them are at a director level or even at a VP level. So it really depends in terms of the seniority but the takeaway is that there's a bunch of different paths that you can take from this program and a lot of different potential career paths for you to pursue if you enroll in this program. So three things that I liked and disliked about the program when I was in it. We want to do like or dislike first. Maybe bad news first. So bad news, there is an immersion quarter, kind of like a internship summer project, but it's different from other internships in that the school would partner with different companies and have an actual scope written out to make sure that you're completing a project within those three months of the actual studies. And throughout that, you'll also have the faculty as support to consult with and help you through that project. You'll not only have the people that are managing you from the different companies that you're interning under, but you'll also have the faculty at the hands. And what's really special is that it's a group consulting project. At my time was a group of four and we were actually transplanted into Houston, flown there for an entire summer. We got all our accommodation set up and we just had to show up there and do this three month consulting project. It's a matching program, so you don't really get a choice. It's based on a series of survey questions and through a algorithm, they'll match the person up with the program based on what your skill sets are and what you're hoping to get out of the program. Personally, I still really like the project that I was put on. 
and my team that I was working with, but I did not have a say as to which project I was doing. And looking back, it might not be the most helpful to propel my experience up into my next stage of my career, even though it was great experience and I learned a lot from it. Second dislike, this is me just whining at this point. You don't necessarily get all the classes that you want. Similar to the immersion program, because there's so many people in the program, not everyone always gets what they want. So how we choose classes is we'll have a bidding system of all the classes that are available during that specific quarter. You'll allocate points. For example, if I really, really want this class, I'll bid 80 points to it. And that will probably ensure I get the class. If there's only 20 people available, they're picking the 20 highest points for that class and letting you in on that class. So it's very strategic in terms of how you bid your points. I guess it is a learning process that you don't get anything out in your life. But if we're paying that much tuition, I guess there was a small complaint that I had that I was not able to take the classes that I want. And not all classes are available in each quarter. So you might get a class that you really want to partake in and missed out on the bidding system and it might not be offered for the rest of the time that you're in the program. There's always opportunity to sit in on a class without taking it for credit. The professors usually let you do that. So that is a workaround on it. If you're really interested in the class, you could still take it. Just not for credit though. The last complaint, again me whining, is just that it's very cold in Evanston. Be prepared for your winters there. It gets very cold, very snowy, very wintry, and seasonal depression is real. Last complaint, nothing about Northwestern, just the general weather of the Midwest. So now let's get to the fun part. The first thing that I really liked about the program is that you get to explore your interests. With all master's programs, it's kind of opening up a second door to a new future. With the Northwestern IMC program, you're really able to do that because of the different classes and the various tracks that you're able to take. And it is a program that opens doors, to say the least. Yeah! Secondly, it's a huge program and everyone in the program is super smart, super capable and come from such different backgrounds. So you're able to gain really different perspectives. Even with work, it's like at a company, people want to hire diverse, but you don't always get that. At the IMC program, it's truly diverse. It might be a lot of APAP people, but these APAP people come from different backgrounds and the program is big enough so that you're able to interact with all these different people throughout these different classes that you're taking. You're able to to learn from how everyone works and you're able to learn things that you're not able to get in classes. That's definitely another plus that I really like. The last thing that I really enjoy them is that the professors are industry people. So the feedback or the projects that they design are things that are applicable to the real world. So when I was applying, because I came straight from undergrad, I didn't have real world work experience. So those were my resume points and working on those projects and the way that they think is how they work in the real world world. So very applicable throughout those different projects, they bring in their industry co-workers, colleagues, and friends and judge you on those projects together. And the feedback that you get is pretty close to what you get in real world. So you're able to learn not only from the professors in terms of the coursework, but you're able to learn from the projects of applying those theories into practice. And by applying those to practice, you're getting real world feedback that you would get in a day-to-day -day work. So lastly, five years after working, my five tips on how you could get the most out of the program. So the first is really know what you want and prioritize what the goals are for you to get out of the program. If you haven't started yet, look at the curriculum, look at what classes are offered and see if those are the classes that you're actually interested in taking. Because if right now you're very sure about pursuing a path in data analytics, maybe this is not the most data analytics heavy program that you could take. Maybe data science is a better program for you to consider. Look at the curriculum and give it some thought. As I kind of mentioned before, there is a lot of opportunity to explore. So if you're like me and want to explore and broaden your perspectives about what specific field or subfield, it will suit you. But if you're very direct on the specific place that you want to end up at, there might be different paths to get to that point. And also in terms of prioritization, it's also when you're in the program. There's so much activities going on 
on in this program, different classes, there's different programs that they offer in terms of going to San Francisco, going to Asia, all those are different things that could take your eyes off the ball. So you know what you want and that's something really important to consider before you do something. And taking a specific course, doing a specific program, or pursuing this master's are all things that goes on in the prioritization list. A second learning I was actually pushed to do this is move and push outside your comfort zones. As humans, we're very prone to stick to what we know. The classes, fields that we're more familiar with, or the people that we're hanging out with, you might want to hang out with them more and work with them on a specific project, but it's so fruitful when you get to take different classes and realize, oh, this was a path that I never considered in my life and this could be something I pursue. Or if you learn something new from a peer that you haven't worked with before, it's very helpful to broaden your perspectives and to how people think and how people do things. It definitely will benefit you to get that exposure at this point in your professional career in life, especially in an academic setting, because after you graduate, you're pretty much set on a specific path. You could transition between different careers, but it's harder to do it after you graduate. So please push outside your comfort zone and explore all those options that you can while you're still in that program, considering there's so many things that you could be exploring in it. The third, you're there to learn, but you're also there to make friends. Some of the closest friends that I interact with day to day and talk to on a day to day are some of the friends that are made in this program. So although it's important to learn and push professionally your mind and your thinking, it's also making those deep connections with the friends and peers that you have around you because those people are not only going to be friends that stay in your life, but are also connections that you'll have as people move everywhere. As I mentioned at the start of the video, everyone's kind of doing everything and doing it everywhere. So there's always good sounding boards to have when you're having a question about your career or a thing that you're not as familiar with in your day-to-day -day job. Using your masters as a time to make those connections and solidifying them is definitely a smart one. You can't go wrong with that. Next, the fourth is take advantage of what Northwestern as a school has to offer. In the IMC program, because there's so many people around you, it's very easy to fall into that. I just want to hang out with the people in my program because there's so many people to hang out with already. I don't even think I got to know all the people in my program during my 15 months there. But there's also so much resource within Northwestern that you could take advantage of. And those are additional connections that you could and should be making. So I was very thankful during my time at Northwestern, I actually bonded and had a lot of interactions with the dance clubs and was able to leverage my photography and take a lot of nice photos with them. It was so great to make those friends. And a lot of those experiences actually became such a core memory of my time at Northwestern was um, taking those photos and engaging with those talented dancers. Last tip is making connections with alums and in a meaningful way. Networking, important. Definitely very important, but it's also how you go about it. You're not just looking for them to get you a referral. Leverage them as mentors. Ask them about their career paths, why they chose a certain path at each point in time, and you might be able to learn from them. And you're interested in connecting with them in terms of where they are today. So why not pick their brain about how they got to where they are and their thought process going through it? That's something that I personally didn't do when I was still at Northwestern, but something that I wish I did more of. So hopefully, you'll be able to learn from that and be able to get the knowledge of people that have been through where you are today and learning from that. So yeah, those are all the thoughts that I had. Let me know if you have any additional questions or any specific points you want me to clarify on. If you like this video, give me a comment, a like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.